Okay, we're back. Uh, anyway, uh, here we go. Uh, duh. By the end of the third week, um, since you can't play more than 12 games in week one, you can't play more than 12 games in week two, you can't play more than 12 games in week three, then we've played a total of 36 games. Okay, uh, and uh, at least 21 games through those three weeks. Well, now we're going to do almost the exact same thing as in the previous uh, problem. Uh, we'll now uh, uh, consider the following uh, sequence. And uh, the sequence that we're going to consider is the, the sequence of partial sums. So A1, um, A1 plus A2, A1 plus A2 plus A3, uh, all the way up to A1 plus A2 plus A3 plus ending with uh, A21. Okay, so this is just what you think. Uh, number of games played by the end of day one, number of games by the end of day two, all the way up to number of games uh, played by the end of, uh, of week 21. Now, as before, oh, and note, uh, note that uh, since, uh, blah, 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 since, since each uh, a sub i is greater than or equal to one, this will become crucial later, uh, he plays at least one game every day, uh, that means um, the, 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 the terms of this sequence are all distinct. The terms of this sequence um, are all distinct. In fact, this is, a increasing, uh, this is an increasing sequence of distinct positive integers. Uh, okay, well, uh, just like before, uh, if... Um, uh, if any of these, just pausing for, oh yeah, if, 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 uh, if for any, uh, if for any, uh, n, um, if for any n, uh, the sum, uh, from a, uh, 1 to, uh, a n is, 21, then we're done, because that's exactly what we want to show, that there exists some sequence of, uh, uh, of consecutive days in which the total number of games played is exactly 21. So if, if the cumulative sum starting from uh, the beginning uh, uh, ever hits 21 exactly, then, then, then we're done. But if not, uh, then now we just consider uh, remainders uh, um, you know, uh, after dividing by 21. If not, then each of, then each of the, uh, <coughs> uh, uh, the then each of the cumulative sums, uh, a1 uh, to uh, a n, uh, has non-zero remainder. Um, when uh, dividing by 21. Wait, uh, ho um, hold on. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. yep. Uh, okay. Uh, because this, just to be clear, this sequence, this sequence here in uh, purple, there are 21 uh, terms uh, uh, in uh, this. Uh, sequence, of course, uh, because it's there are 21 uh, partial sums, the partial sums for the first 21 days. And if there are 21 terms of the sequence, but none of them... Oh, this is the moment at which we note that since the sum from... I knew something was missing. Since the sum, since, since the cumulative sum all the way to 21 has to be less than or equal to 36, then I don't need to worry about other multiples of 21. In other words, uh, 42 uh, or any other higher multiple of 21 is irrelevant in this case because you just he, the chess master simply just can't have played 42 games uh, in um, can't have played uh, 42 games in the uh, 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 in the first 21 days because that would violate uh, the uh, don't play 12 games in a day in, in a calendar week thing. And therefore, uh, it must be that 
that that that uh, if the sum, if the cumulative sum is not 21, then it is in fact not a multiple of 21 either. And uh, so it is, a, it is a number which has non-zero remainder when dividing by 21. Uh, okay, uh, and then, um, well, we just do it again, right? By the pigeonhole principle, since uh, we uh, have uh, 21 uh, partial sums, partial sums, um, but only uh, 20 possible, possible non-zero uh, remainders, um, then it means that uh, two partial sums have the same, uh, two partial sums have the same remainder, um, have the same uh, remainder. Okay, well, uh, following the, the notation of the previous, no, not following the notation of the previous problem, it must be the case that uh, for example, so say uh, for M and N, let it be that A1 plus A2 plus all the way up to uh, AN is 21 Q1 plus R and A1 plus A2 plus all the way to uh, AM is 21 Q2 plus R. In other words, um, uh, uh, let uh, where, where, uh, where R is in this case, we're assuming that these cumulative sums are not multiples of 21, so in other words, the remainder is non-zero, but of course, the remainder has to be uh, less than 21. In other words, we just apply the Euclidean division algorithm to, to these two partial sums, the sum up to day n and the sum up to day m, where, without loss of generality, n is less than m. Uh, okay, and now, just as with the previous problem, we subtract. And if we subtract, um, hold on a second, maybe I don't even want to subtract per se. Maybe I just want to say that, um, hold on, I lost my train of thought for a second there. Uh, what am I trying to show? I'm trying to, oh, okay, so, um, notice that, ah, okay, I see. So, uh, so now, uh, uh, here's what we know. We know, unlike, unlike in the, unlike in the previous problem, when it was an arbitrary, uh, uh sequence of integers, possibly including, um, uh, some repeats and positives and negatives and stuff like that, since this, uh, sequence, the sequence in purple, is, um, uh, uh, increasing, uh, by uh, at least one each time that all these things are distinct. So since all these are distinct, it is, possi it is impossible for two uh, uh, of these um, to be exactly the same. It's impossible for two partial sums to be, uh, to be the same. And so, once I've expressed these two partial sums uh, in these two different ways, then I can say for sure that Q1 is not Q2. Uh, and also, if Q1 is not uh, Q2, what are the possible values for Q1 and Q2? Well, um, could Q2 be 2? No. Because if Q2 is 2, uh, then uh, by day M we must have played like 43 games or something like that. But we know from this uh, line here that in fact the, uh, um, the partial sums uh, have to be uh, less than or equal to 36 for all the numbers under consideration. And so, um, since, uh, since 21Q2 plus R has to be less than or equal to 36, uh, we can say that Q2 has to be uh, less than 2. It can't be 2 or higher. And, all right, well, there we go. Uh, right? If Q1 and Q2 are the, uh, are the, um, are, are, are positive, are integers, and, uh, positive integers, and, uh, Q2, uh, has to be less than 2, and Q1 is less than Q2, because N is less than M, uh, and they also have to be different, then the only way to satisfy that is if, in fact, Q1 is 0, and Q2 is 1. Um, why is that important? Uh, well, that means that, in fact, uh, on day um, one, 
to up until n, we played exactly 21 plus r games, and on day 1 uh, up to day m, we play, no, sorry, we played R games, because Q1 is zero, and on uh, days one up to M, we played 21 plus R games. And now we subtract. And if we subtract, we see that on days A N plus one, uh, or sorry, on day N plus one, and day N plus two, all the way up to day M, we played precisely 21 games. Okay. That was an extremely careful explanation, um, but hopefully that was uh, clear. Okay, let's just keep on going now um, and do another problem. This is a, a problem on page five. Okay. Okay, so um, here we go. Here is a problem on page five. Here's what it says. Show that for given any 52 integers, given any 52 integers, there exists two of them whose sum or else whose difference is divisible by 100. Uh, there exists uh, a pair uh, for which uh, either uh, either the sum or difference uh, is divisible by 100. Okay. Uh, divisible divisible by 100. All right, I got this problem just barely. Uh, it's not super hard, but it's starting to get pretty hard. All right, given any 52 integers, there exists two of them whose sum or whose difference is divisible by 100. All right, so um, this is gonna be sort of a, a proof by, um, yo, it's gotta be. Um, and uh, you can think about what it would take to sort of break this theorem, or something like that. So, um, how, how, how could you avoid it? Or, or maybe, uh, what kinds of things suffice for there to be a sum or difference is divisible by 100? So, the problem is that we have 52 integers, so they could be anything, right? Um, so, uh, you could just have, you know, a lot of really, really big numbers. Um, you know, four, seven thousand, uh, six, you know, uh, um, uh, uh, 51, whatever. A lot of integers. There are 52 of them. Uh, why must there be a pair for which the sum or difference is divisible by 100? Well, first of all, if there are any two of them which add to 100, then that would be uh, done. Uh, if there are any two of them which add to a multiple of 100, that would also be we would also be uh, done. Uh, and then the differences, right? If there are any two of them for which uh, their difference is divisible by 100, um, then, uh, then that also, so okay, so, so here, uh, for example, here we just use a pair for the sum of 100. So now, uh, what I kind of want to do is say, oh, um, lost my train of thought here for a second. So, okay, so if you had 4 and like 96, if, not, if 4 and 96 were on the list, well then just grab them. Because those two together, uh, when you add them, uh, have, a, uh, have a sum of 100. Okay, um, but uh, also uh, if you had, whoa, if you had like 103 and uh, 97, then you would want to sort of uh, grab them too, because they would not add to 100, but they would add to a multiple of 100. 
So any time this sort of remainder after dividing by 100 is, um, well, I just won't say anything yet. Uh, now let's uh, uh, consider the fact that if their difference is divisible by uh, 100, then, then that also suffices. So, okay, so, so what does that mean? That means if you had like, you know, 114 and, well, 14, um, then uh, you could subtract them and you could get uh, something which was a multiple uh, of 100. But then also we should consider, um, yeah, yeah, and so, okay, so maybe this is already kind of enough. What we want to now do is we want to sort of split them up um, uh, in, this, in this kind of a way such that uh, uh, numbers which are going to add to 100 are in the same sort of uh, box. Uh, so so think, about, think about the boxes like, like this. Um, so uh, take like 1 and... Um, 99. Put those together in a box. If your two numbers, uh, you have these 52 integers, right? If your two numbers are 1 and 99, or any number which uh, has remainder 1 after dividing by 100, or remainder 99 after dividing by 100, then put those together in a box. And if your two numbers land in that box, well then, clearly, their sum is, is going to be a multiple of 100. And then just keep doing that. Take a box with 2 and 98. Take a box with 3 and uh, 97. And just keep on going all the way up to, I guess, like 49 and 51. Okay, so if I did this correctly, there are going to be uh, 50 boxes there. Uh, no, 49 boxes, of course. Um, there are 49 of these boxes, and um, uh, what are these boxes? Uh, they're, they're basically just remainders after dividing by 100. Uh, and now, of course, what's the other possibility is that you could uh, have remainder 0 after dividing by 100. And another possibility is that you could have uh, 50 uh, after dividing by 100. And I want to treat these separately because if you have two numbers which both have remainder 0, at, so, so maybe I should just start writing, this is a terrible explanation, but basically now take, uh, you know, for, for each, for each, uh, for each uh, of the 52 integers, uh, um, uh, take uh, their uh, positive uh, remainders uh, mod, mod 50, mod 100, which is just to say for each of these, for each of these numbers, uh, for any number n, just express it as uh, Q, uh, um, Q100 uh, plus uh, plus r, where we've seen um, r is, is, is positive uh, and less than 100. Uh, okay, uh, so the remainder is always positive. And now, considering the remainders, because, okay, anything over 100 is, is, is just uh, stupid, so of course we want to uh, focus on the remainders uh, mod 100. Um, so uh, now, uh, we see that there are that that there are these 52 sort of different boxes, um, 49, 50, no, 51. <laughs> so we have we have 51 uh, boxes uh, and uh, 52 um, numbers. Uh, so by the pigeonhole principle, um, there are uh, two. Uh, numbers um, in the same box. There, well, better to say, there are, there is at least one box. There is at least 
one box with uh, at least uh, two uh, numbers in it. And now we go by cases. If the box, if the zero box is the box with two numbers in it, then what that means is that there are two numbers out of my 52 which in fact have, uh, uh, which are in fact are divisible by 100. Well then just either add or subtract them, it doesn't matter. If you give me, right, yeah, if you, yeah, yep, just let's say, yeah, if you add, yes, right, yeah, if you add two numbers, uh, which are divisible by 100, of course, you'll get a sum which is divisible by 100, and if you subtract two numbers which are divisible by 100, you'll get a number which is divisible by 100. So if the two numbers fall into the zero box, great. If the two numbers fall into the 50 box, this is the part I thought was a little bit subtle, um, then uh, what that means is that, well, you have these two numbers which have remainder mod, uh, which have uh, 50, uh, uh, remainder 50 uh, mod 100. Well, then you just add them. If you have two numbers uh, with remainder 50 uh, after dividing by 100, then when you add them together, their sum will be um, will be a multiple of 100. I guess their difference will also be a multiple of 100. So there you go. All right. So the more interesting case is what happens if the two numbers, and remember the pigeonhole principle guarantees us that uh, there is at least one of these 51 boxes with two numbers in it. So take the 397 box. Uh, what does this mean? It means that we must have some number, say call it A, uh, which, uh, is, uh, which is of the form 100Q plus 3, and there's some number B uh, out of our 52 original numbers, which is the form 100Q plus, oh, actually no, it's more complicated than that. All it says is that within this box, there are two numbers. So I guess there are, there are, there are three possibilities, right? Uh, either A and B both have remainder, um, so I should use a different Q here, so Q1, uh, Q2. Either A and B uh, uh, both have remainder 3 uh, after dividing by 100, or uh, A uh, has uh, has a remainder 3 when dividing by 100 and B uh, has remainder 97 or vice versa uh, or uh, they both have remainder 97 um, when dividing by 100. The pigeonhole principle guarantees that since there are 52 integers and they may have 51 boxes then there must be one box with at least two numbers in it uh, and uh, taking sort of arbitrarily the 397 box, um, uh, then that box must have at least two uh, numbers in it. So take two of the numbers in that box, again arbitrarily, uh, either they have the same uh, remainder after dividing by 100, being 3, in which case of course if you subtract them, now you'll get a number um, which is a multiple of 100. Uh, and if they both have remainder 97, then again, if you subtract them, you'll get a number which is re which has remainder which is which is divisible by 100. And here, if they have a, a sort of opposite remainders, uh, so to speak, uh, then uh, they are perfectly matched up, so that when you add them together, you'll get uh, their sum is is a multiple of 100. Okay, good. That was terrible.